Hey, good morning and welcome to Grace Middleway. Uh, glad you're here with us. Uh, really no new announcements. Uh, so we'll start with the prelude. start here in the bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Join me in the collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work, and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First reading comes from Genesis 25, 1 through 15. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they of his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it, is, so it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and Lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will see your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, seeing that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt, and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. 
while Benjamin wept on his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 133 will recite responsibly by half verse. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard. Upon the beard of Aaron and runs down upon the collar of his throat. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Pray. How good and pleasant it is to sit in unity. The second reading comes from Romans 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew, for the gifts and the calling of God are irreverent. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that they may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And 
He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and to throw it to the dog. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall on the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So, are people here in the seminary or what today? I guess, uh, I think that's the thumbs up. I don't know. <laughs> this mask kind of falls to me. Well, they all come here to do sermon today. Sorry about the noise. Put the uh, put the mic right here in the holder. Now there's no doubt that today's gospel lesson could, well, it could, I mean, literally leave you just a little confused. It starts when we hear Jesus challenging the law concerning various foods that would defy the person, making the person essentially unclean. And to really hammer home this point, Jesus tells the crowd, the disciples, and even the Pharisees over here as well, that what comes out of the mouth is what defies. And I would say that even in today's society, we need to add to that, because so many of our conversations seem to take place on social platforms. It's also what comes out of the end of your fingertips as you touch. This is the final person just as much as what they say verbally. The words we speak, the words we type, when we push and sin, reflect the true intentions of our heart and our minds. For some reason, we seem to think that what we say and what we type doesn't matter. That it doesn't matter if we're putting someone down, if we're hurting someone. It doesn't matter about anyone but numero uno. And that's our society today. But tell me, how are those words that we speak and type when we say things? And we all get upset and say things, but what those things that come out of our mouths should be all for the building up of God's kingdom. If, we're to take, if we take just a little time before we speak, before we type, just to think about what you're getting ready to say in response to something, it could make all the difference in the world. But, I said, as I said at the beginning of the text, it's a little confusing when we take it at just the initial reading without any exegesis or a little investigating into the translation we hear today. After we hear the first part of the gospel, Jesus and his followers head off toward a different region, off towards Tyre and Sidon, what is now modern day Lebanon. Now, if you look at the map, you see it's quite a journey. It's not like you hear this first part and then they take an hour's walk or something. They're in this new region. Now, it probably would have taken several days' journey, to say the least. This region that they're in, into is one of a pagan region, Gentile region. It was an area that both Jews and Gentiles would have been found in. And of course, it's the area where the Canaanite woman approaches Jesus and the disciples. Word of Jesus must have been spreading rapidly for this Gentile woman to have heard about Jesus. And to even know that this group is where Jesus could be found. But know that, know this, this woman is on a mission. Her daughter is sick. And she knows that the only help for her daughter can be found in Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can save her. But of course she's ignored by Jesus at first. But she is persistent. Have you ever been in a so intent on something that he too, like this woman, just took it as giving up is not an option? Have you ever found yourself in one of those positions where stopping, giving up is not an option? You're on a path, you're on a mission, and you are going to succeed. That is this woman. But speaking of persistence, now this is going off a little bit different, but I couldn't help but keep my mind. When you hear people ask for prayers, or when you yourself need prayers, how persistent are you? How persistent am I? Are we indeed on our knees in our prayer closet, as 
taught about in Scripture, in Scripture three to four times a day? Are we that persistent? Are we on that much of a mission in our prayer life? And when we say, or we type to someone, we see, you know, bad situations on Facebook, and we say, oh, my prayers and thoughts are with you, with this person, with this family. Are they really, or is that really just a popular thing to say and type? Because if we are persistent in our prayers, if we are not persistent in our prayers, why would we even say that? We're just giving them empty hope, empty words, unless we back them up with those prayers. Prayer is a huge, huge, huge part of our faith. It's how our worship is driven by how we pray. Persistence. Pray, 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 and then pray some more for whatever it is. If it's for yourself, pray. If it's for someone else, pray. If it's for the marriage, pray. If it's for a job loss, pray. If it's for our prayers, pray. Whatever it is, be persistent like this Gentile woman. She goes to Jesus, or we should go to Jesus in prayer just like she did in that faith. Lord, help me. Lord, help these others that I name on my prayers. Lord, you know their needs. Persistent. Prayer does change me. Now, my little grandfather. Now back to where we were. So Jesus ignores this woman at first. And then after the disciples complains, he tells her that, hey, I've only been sent to the lost sheep of Israel, which she is not a part of. And then on her knees, she says, Lord, help me. Now here's where some confusion can say. Think back to what Jesus said, what defiles a person. And Jesus says, it's not fair to take the children's food and drop to the dogs. Whoa, Jesus. Do you recall what you just told us back there in the center about what defiles a person? Jesus, hey, maybe you're healing all those sick people at the center of you forgot about what you said about what defiles a person? I mean, did Jesus just call this woman a dog? That's what it says, right? Well, depends. The better, well, the better interpretation is this. Little puppies. Finorials. It's Greek for little puppies. And when I read it as little puppy, or little puppy, it puts a little different meaning to the text. To use that term, for me anyway, it means she's not completely out of it. How many people today look at their pets as part of their family? Yeah. She's still inside the house with the old young. She's still in the master's house. And maybe she just hasn't fully grown to her, to her faith yet. She's a little puppy. Well, maybe she has. Maybe she has because she does recognize Jesus and knows what he can do. And so in that act, Consistency in that act of great faith, she challenges Jesus by saying, Yes, Lord, even the puppies, even the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus, I think, was amazed at her response. Her response was, What? Woman, great is your faith, and let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed immediately. Wow, what faith, what persistency. She didn't give up. Two times, there's a third, but the other one's kind of confusing. There are two times people are told great is their faith. And neither one of them were a Jew from the house of Israel. One was this Canaanite lady, the other was the throne of soldier. Great was their faith, not from the house of Israel, but from the Gentile world. There's a song. Song we didn't we don't read it today, but it goes like this. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. The Lord upholds all those who fall, not some, all. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O oh Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and 
satisfy the needs of who? Every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near who? To those who call upon him. And to who? All. All who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves who? All those who love him. But he destroys all the way. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. This is a new. God's always doing new things. God's doing new things in this scripture today in the gospel. He is letting his grace be known beyond the house of Israel. Expanding into the Gentile world. Persistency in faith, persistency in prayer, persistency, man, I'm having a hard time talking to me, something in my mouth. Persistency in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Persistency in spreading, as our PD says, the way of love. This was the message for the disciples that day, and it's the message that we receive today. So let us go forth, being persistent in all our words and deeds, building up the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. If you will, stand with me and let us recite the Nazi Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, the God of God.
Mary Ellen, Stanley, Haley, Leslie, Nancy, Mary, Sandy, Mark, Carolyn, Bianca, Linda, Raymond, Jennifer, Anna Miller, Anne, Philip, Bill, Mark, Terry, Dawn, Nancy and Family, Richard, Terry Beth, Lonnie, Barbara, Brady, Nancy, Diana, Lorraine, Bruce, Wendell, Donald, Rick and Family, victims of natural disasters and our service members of home and abroad and Christians around the world. Lord, let your cup line and kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and set up all us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in of life, the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Have mercy upon oh, me. Sorry, I'm the wrong thing. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen him, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And I'll with you. Peace, 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 peace. Peace. peace up in the balcony. Peace online to all of you who are watching this. If I lay that down like that, can you still hear me? I, I think the I think the lavalier is working okay too. Okay. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as Christ our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Receive in your heart and in your soul the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and keep you all in everlasting life. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace. Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessings of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you all. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.